Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. We are going to discuss mixology, the art of custom blending with Eleco Organic Skin Care. Uh, let's go over the topics of discussion, and also I just want to give a brief introduction of myself. Welcome, everyone. My name is Jessica Heron, National Educator with Eleco Organic Skin Care and Pure Spa Organics. I'm very happy today to sh uh, share with you and spend some time with you on learning how to custom tailor your treatments for your clients and really tailor your uh, facials to their needs by utilizing custom blending techniques with illegal organic skincare products. Today's topics of mixology. First, we'll discuss the principles of mixing. Some of the rules uh, that apply to mixing illegal organic skincare products. Some do's and some don'ts of what to do and what not to do and also the principles of dilution. Also, uh, this just is talking about diluting the product, adding something to the product that may dilute it, like water or herbal teas, for example. When to do this, how to do it, and some of the uh, uh, products and things that you can utilize as your dilution. Understanding the pH of Alike products as well. Understanding the acidity and the alkalinity of illegal organic skincare products, and then also understanding what is the skin pH, learning how this applies to custom blending and understanding uh, the difference between acidity and alkalinity. Also mixing by skin type and skin condition as well. So we will be discussing also mixing and blending your products according to the client's skin's hydration level and also addressing any specific conditions that you would want to uh, address with your customizations. Um, of course, understanding the pH of the products will help you with deciding on what the best blend and custom technique would be according to their skin types and their specific conditions that need to be addressed and treated. Also, mixing with stimulation. Uh, if you have used Elika before, you know that we do have some stimulating products using Hungarian paprika spices and Hungarian cherry peppers. This is a very useful technique, and there are certain times to utilize the stimulation and sort of going through the do's and don'ts of blending and mixing with your stimulation and your paprika. And we'll also demonstrate an Alico organic custom facial today, going through step-by-step -step in each uh, application of cleanser, toner, exfoliator, uh, masks and moisturizing treatments, uh, showing you some of uh, my favorite blends, and also discussing with you, um, I'll be sharing with you too, some of my specific recommendations um, that will address specific skin types and conditions. And those are going to be some of my favorite blends. And learning about some of those will also kind of give you some motivation and some insight into creating your own as well. All right, so let's discuss the principles of mixing. First, make sure that you have enough product on hand. This is very important because it will take, you know, per application, sometimes during the mask step, moisturizing and cleansing steps, if you would like to do your custom blending, you need to make sure that you have enough product in your back bar to do a custom facial and to be able to tailor it to someone's needs. You would, it would be my suggestion that you would need at least a few different solutions in each product category in order to address a client's specific condition and their skin type. Also, you can try some sensory testing with your client. Because we are a line that's based on botanicals and essential oils and herbs, there's a, a, quite a bit of aromatherapy benefits that are involved with our product. There'll be certain scents that your clients prefer and certain scents that they may not prefer. If you go through a series of testing some of those scents during your consultation with your client, you're, you'll probably have a more successful experience with that client because they will enjoy the aromatherapy benefits that um, you'll be using on the client throughout the facial. And instead, you know, this will give you a, a good way of avoiding any um, negative or, uh, you know, negative um, response to any aromatherapy that you may put on their skin. So they enjoy it from beginning to end. Also, determine what you want to treat. Make sure at the beginning of the facial that you do a thorough consultation and skin analysis. You'll want to make sure that you address 
the um, custom blending according to their skin type, whether they're oily, dehydrated, or dry, et cetera, and also any specific conditions that need to be treated. You'll need to discuss some of those main concerns with the client. Why are they here for their facial today? Also going over your observations as well when you do take a look through your magnifying lamp and also maybe a woods lamp if you use um, any other tools that help you with um, deciding what type of skin conditions and type your client is and uh, work through your client with suggestions and recommendations as well as not only deciding on what you'll use in the facial, but also deciding on what home care recommendations that you will um, recommend for them and educate them about the importance of the take-home product and how that supports the treatment that you'll be doing today on their skin. How many treatments will you do in the facial as far as, say, your treatment mask? You may do one or you might do two. Now, that depends on sometimes when you use stimulation in the facial. Sometimes if we're doing a stimulating mask, we want to follow with a second mask in order to calm the skin if it's done at the end of the facial. The paprika in the stimulation can also be utilized as a sebum or an oil emulsifier in the beginning of the facial. And that typically you will only need to do one mask. Uh, if you would like, of course, it, the client can always benefit from a second mask, whether you're doing stimulation in the beginning or the end. If you're choosing to do stimulation at the end of the facial, it is my recommendation that you do two, two treatment masks and follow with a soothing and calming treatment. We'll discuss this topic more later. Use the principles of pH when blending and Ligue products together. So this comes with understanding the pH of Ligue products. We do provide all of our customers with a pH list of all of our products in each category, cleansers, toners, exfoliators, et cetera. This can be requested through our customer service department or through your account manager, and we will be happy to provide that for you. Mix oil with oil and water with water. And, um, you know, the uh, sebum in the skin, uh, sometimes uh, a client may have too little or too much, and you'll need to decide whether your products are going to be oil-based or more of a water-based product, depending on the hydration level. Also, when blending the products together, if you have oil-based products, they will mix better with oil, and water-based products mix better with other water-based products. Again, following the principle um, of why we were in aesthetic school, that oil and water just don't mix. And in science class, you, you, you learned that in science class as well, probably in your chemistry class in high school. So it's a very um, simplified approach to blending and mixing oil and water. Decide if you're going to blend in stimulation and when. As I mentioned earlier, uh, you could be deciding to do one or two masks, and it could depend on the stimulation. You may decide that you want to blend in stimulation early on to help emulsify oil and sebum, or you may decide to blend in stimulation after uh, the mask to provide a more vitalizing mask or a rejuvenating or a regenerating or maybe even an oxygenating treatment, which paprika provides all of those effects. So it's up to you to decide when and what the needs of the clients are and when you will blend in your stimulation. Now, only stimulate the skin once during the facial with paprika. Uh, it is not recommended that you do stimulation more than one time. Uh, for one, you want to make sure that you are using something that helps to cool and calm the skin uh, following the stimulation. It's more comfortable for the client. You don't want to create something stimulating constantly throughout unless that's something that they really desire. <laughs> you know, it could be very um, uh, personal to that client whether or not they enjoy stimulation throughout or maybe they need a break. But as a rule of thumb, it is our recommendations that you just only stimulate one time during the facial. And it could be in the beginning or the end. It's just up to you to decide what the need of the client is in the beginning during your skin, during your skin analysis and consultation. Principles of dilution. The Alico Organic Skincare products are created in a way that typically does not require dilution by the esthetician, but it may be done. And we're going to uh, talk about some of the best ways to do this, um, some do's and don'ts as well. Undiluted, the texture and the consistency works according to the indications and the directions that are given in our manual. So what we're saying is that it's not necessary to dilute, but it can enhance the experience of the facial, also the ease of applying the product, uh, and also enhancing them with certain types of things that you can dilute the product with other than just water. You may dilute some of our products, primarily the masks and the special treatments, 
in order to emulsify them so they spread onto the skin easier especially some of our um, exfoliating scrubs, for example, the rolling face and body exfoliator, or maybe the rose hip exfoliator. They have a consistency like a mask. So they tend to be a little bit thicker and richer in their textures, and you may dilute those a little bit with a little bit of water or herbal tea to enhance the experience, but also to emulsify the product so it's easier for application. Also consider that, you may, that, that the more you dilute the product, the more you dilute their effectiveness as well. Typically with water, that would be um, true. If you decide to add an herbal tea, for example, from maybe a loose organic tea, you can actually enhance the effectiveness of the product because you're adding an herb into the treatment. So consider that when you're deciding whether or not you're gonna dilute the product. If you are gonna dilute, it enhances the treatment to use herbal teas versus water. So just as an FYI. Actual dilution might be replaced by dipping your hand periodically into water or the recommended herbal tea to keep your hand slippery for the aid of massage even. So this is another technique utilizing the liquid or having a bowl of water or a bowl of herbal tea to help you emulsify your massage creams or your rich moisturizers or rejuvenating treatments as an aid for massage, so that can be done as well. We recommend the following dilutions components by skin group. Now these are recommendations, they're suggestions that we're gonna start with recommending, but you may do your own little research on some herbs and herbal teas and the benefits of those different herbs that you could incorporate and even promote for seasonal treatments, holiday treatments, or just a special promotion if you'd like to do a monthly promotion and switch your herbal teas. Also just have a group of different ones on hand to address a specific skin type. And here's the following recommendation. For problematic or seborrhea skin, skin that may have um, acne conditions, maybe even uh, sensitivity or rosacea or inflammation or drying, dehydration or flaking or itching skin, uh, you may use organic rosehip tea or lukewarm water. Rose hips have a lot of vitamin content. They also have anti-inflammatory and soothing effects and toning and tightening and astringent effects as well. Premature or somewhat problematic skin. This is a client that is um, probably within their 20s, 30s age group, somewhat problematic, maybe with periodical breakout prone skin. Organic linden tea or lukewarm water. The linden tea, the botanical and the linden is full of beta carotene and antioxidants that help to protect against sun damage and UV damage, but also is a very soothing herb as well the aging or mature skin type category, uh, where you might have signs of aging, lines and wrinkles, lack of tone, um, and some sensitivities or inflammation may be involved with maybe some hormonal imbalances as well. Organic calendula tea or lukewarm water can also be a solution for that type of client. Calendula is another botanical. You can see here the marigold flower and the calendula flower are in the same family where you have carotenoids that help with combating UV damage, helping to scavenge free radicals, have antioxidant properties, and a very soothing and calming effect as well. Special treatments, like for example, oxygenating, or even summer fruit treatments, like body treatments or body wraps. You can also utilize some organic peppermint tea, which is a very soothing, a very cooling effect. Also, the peppermint soothes pain. So for body treatments, it can be a wonderful addition into adding into our body wraps too as well. Now, those are just a few recommendations for tea. I will be showing you one today with a little bit different herbs and going through the explanation of why I chose those the ones on the model that we're going to show you today. So we'll get to that later during the facial demonstration. Principles of dilution. Remember that we do not recommend fruit juices, vegetable juices, or sparkling mineral water for dilution. As these types of ingredients uh, and the pH level of these liquids can have the very uncontrollable or even a very undesirable effect on our products. And the reason is, is because the pH of these types of products tend to be quite acidic. And again, you know, our products are, uh, have a, a pH level that's appropriate for addressing the skin type and the conditions that they're formulated to treat. So when you add vegetable juices, sparkling water, uh, things that have an uncontrollable pH level, you're actually, when you're adding that to a product, you are creating an unstable pH environment. So just remember that it's best when you're doing any type of dilution with a liquid that you use water or herbal teas that have more of a neutral pH. 
All right, so let's talk about understanding pH, understanding pH in general, but also understanding the pH of our Alika Organic Skincare products. So first off, one, on its skin surface, the skin has an acid mantle made up of lipids, sebum, and sweat. And these substances protect the skin from harsh elements. Your skin needs a certain amount of oil to stay waterproof and to also resist infections. Too little can lead to dry skin and the premature development of wrinkles and lines and aging. Too much oil can lead to oily skin and also acne skin problems. The acne bacteria feeds off the oil in the skin. <laughs> Excuse me. So if the oil in the skin is too high, there is a probability and a higher risk of developing acne on the skin. The oil in your skin is called sebum, which is also oil and it's produced by the sebaceous gland, uh, a, a, a tiny duct that is found in your skin that lies next to the hair follicles where the oil is produced. The pH, which stands for the potential of hydrogen scale, ranges from zero to 14. So how is this measured? pH is measured from one upwards, with one being highly acidic and 14 being highly alkaline. A uh, pH uh, of 7, right there in the middle, is a neutral pH. A pH between 1 and 6 to 9 is acidic, and between 7, 1 and 14 is alkaline. So the scale will go from 0 to 14. 7 in the middle is neutral. Below 7 is acidic. Higher than 7 is alkaline. Also, the lower the pH, the more acidic the substance. The higher, the more alkaline. Okay, so the skin is a fairly acidic uh, um, acid mantle, which it helps it ward off the advances of harmful bacteria and fungi. That acidity level is what keeps the bacteria away from the skin. The optimal pH of human skin is five and a half, and you can measure it with a piece of litmus paper if you wish. Remember, we kind of did that. You probably did that in science class or maybe in your aesthetics college as well. <clears throat> Most cosmetics should have a slightly acid pH. Your sweat with the sebum on your skin to form something called an acid mantle is what we were talking about, that acid mantle, 0 to 14, which has a pH of 4 to 5.5. That's the natural acidity level of your skin. Using astringent soap removes the acid mantle and can leave the skin vulnerable to fungal or bacterial infections. Spar soap. Spar soap tend to have um, a more alkaline uh, pH. And um, so body soaps like such as Dove or Palmolive or Breeze, for example, or to name a few, that should not be used on the face because they tend to have a more stripping or a higher alkaline substance that is not um, a perfected formulation with hydrators or emulsifiers that can help to keep that um, soap from disrupting your natural moisture or your natural oil barrier. So um, we do in Alika Organic Skincare products have alkaline substances, but they will actually be formulated to uh, perfect uh, the formulation with emulsifiers and hydrators to protect the skin from removing too much oil. It will remove surface oils, and it has a degreasing effect in our product, but it will not be a dangerous side effect. Acidic topical skincare products help to reduce dryness and also sensitivity. If you have a little bit more of that acidity level that's below the 7, they will also be more appropriate for drier skin types and also some sensitive skin types as well a higher pH or more alkaline sub, uh, substance, those values make it more permeable or more prone to bacteria and infection. So this can be sometimes good in circumstance of disincrustation solutions. But remember that once you use these types of alkaline substances, that they must be balanced uh, with a toner or a cleanser that has a, um, a pH balanced solution. Soaps are usually more alkaline, allowing them to degrease the skin, which we were mentioning earlier, and can be severely drying if it's not controlled by the balancing, by balancing the pH following the procedure, as I just mentioned, with, say, a toner that is um, more acidic, or um, maybe even a pH balance cleanser. Here is sort of what an uh, acid mantle scale looks like. Here you have 7 in the middle, which is neutral. Up above the 7, you have more alkaline substance and below the seven is more acidic. Now remember, in order to um, decipher VK products, are they acidic or are they alkaline? Refer to our pH of VK products 
uh, chart, skin chart that we can provide for you. Um, taking a look at some of those, uh, we will take a look at some of the, what those ranges are in our group of products in the next slides to come. So for example, cleansers for oily skin may have a slightly higher pH than that of the acid mantle and followed by low pH toners in order to balance the skin's pH. AHA exfoliation treatments, so for example, like chemical peels or fruit peels, like for example, our organic peels are our fruit acid peel, but they will maintain more of a lower pH, they're more acidic. The ideal pH for an AHA peel that an esthetician could do safely in your practice is a pH of 3.0. Peels with a pH lower than 3.0 require more careful attention by the esthetician to the client during the process and are designed for quicker treatment. So typically if they have anything lower than a 3.0, they're gonna be a fast application <coughs> after the application. The affecting period usually will range somewhere between two minutes to five minutes. Uh, because that acidity is so low, they're fast acting and can really penetrate the skin's um, epidermal layer very quickly, reaching sometimes down to the live dermal layers of the skin. Now, when they get below a 2.0, then they're very acidic and have a very high risk of reaching those live dermal layers. That's when it becomes more of a medical type of a chemical peel and must be um, uh, overseen by a physician or an RN, somebody that has um, training and the credentials in order to um, assist with these types of peels. Always remember to balance the skin's pH level following any peel procedure and any procedure that has a high alkalinity as well. But also with that low acidity in those chemical peels and some exfoliators, bringing that skin pH back up to the four range, four and a half to five and a half, is going to be appropriate and, 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 and really help to maintain the skin's oil and um, um, you know, the, the acid mantle and maintain the skin's, the skin's right amount of oil. Understanding um, pH of a leaky products per category. So we have the milk cleansers. Those are our first cleansers that help to remove makeup. They also help to remove eye makeup and lipstick. And they're oil-based cleansers that help to remove oil. Oil removes oil, but they're pH balanced to a four and a half and a five and a half. So they're very safe for the skin. Exfoliating washes. These are our alkaline products that can be used for disincrustation. And they're also used as a light daily exfoliator. It helps to soften, remineralize the skin, and ignite the exfoliation process by helping to loosen the dead skin cells. What it will also do is provide you an emulsifying effect for emulsifying oil and stripping the surface of the skin uh, with the, the skin surface oil, not the, um, not the natural moisture balance. We have a really good formulation in our exfoliating washes that key, do help to keep the skin hydrated. Our toners range between a three to a five and a half, so slightly acidic, and then up to the natural skin's pH, of course, which is slightly acidic, but they have a range. And again, we can provide you with that list if by request. Exfoliators, 4.5 to an 8.0, so they range from slightly acidic to also alkaline, depending on if we're dealing with a dry skin or an oilier skin type. You would choose your exfoliator according to whether they're oily, dehydrated, or dry. If they are a little bit drier, I will use a more acidic uh, exfoliator. If they are a little bit more oily, I'll choose a um, more alkaline exfoliator to help soften and emulsify oil and help to assist with any deep pore cleansing or extractions that need to be, to be done. Our masks have a wide range, ranging between a three and a half to a seven. Uh, which is a little bit more alkaline. So depending again on whether they're oily, dehydrated, or dry, choose your mask accordingly. And also remember, when you're blending these products together, say for example, like our mask, or say for example, the um, moisturizers even, if you mix something that is alkaline and you mix something that is acidic together, what's gonna happen? They're gonna cancel each other out and you're gonna end up with something more of, of a neutral pH. <laughs> uh, so remember, if you're blending something together for a drier skin type and you're choosing something more acidic because that is the appropriate um, acidity level to address a drier skin, then mix acidic product with something acidic and do the same thing with something that for an oily skin type 
mix something alkaline together with something else that's alkaline to uh, maintain a proper pH for the type of skin uh, type that you're actually addressing. Okay, so the peels. Our peels um, do range on a more acidic level, a 2.0 to a 4.0. Uh, we have different peels that have different uh, acidity ranges. And again, to refer to our P list of pH of our products by request to get the exact specific pHs. Our moisturizers also have a wide range because we have a, many different solutions, especially in the mask category and the moisturizing category for different skin conditions and also the skin type. So there's a very wide range in those two categories ranging from a very an acidic 3.5 to an alkaline 8.0. Our serums have a more of an acidic range. They are usually um, the last product that's applied before the moisturizer. They have a little bit more of an acidic pH to really maintain a proper skin's pH, a 3.0 to a 5.5. So they definitely will be also another solution for balancing pH after doing a teal or maybe even after doing um, something using something that's more alkaline on the skin. Those could also be a solution for balancing pH. All right, so mixing by skin type and condition. I'm going to just go through some very common skin types and conditions and some recommendations of custom blending and mixing that you can do. Now, these are some of my favorites. Remember that these are just suggestions. They're not rules, but they can definitely be something that you could utilize to get yourself going but also then you can build off these recommendations. So for aging and dry skin, phytoestrogen line for menopausal skin types. The conditions with this skin tend to be a little bit maybe more drier or dehydrated. They may have hormone balancing uh, imbalances where the conditions are signs of aging or maybe even periodical breakouts on the skin. So that could be also lines and wrinkles that are more dominant and also um, the effects of um, even in an imbalance of oil and water in the skin because of the uh, direct effect of the hormonal imbalance, the lack of estrogen. So for example, um, you could take your rich carrot mask or maybe rich carrot moisturizer. These are rich treatments. They have soothing and calming effects. They have antioxidant benefits and tightening and elasticizing effects as well. One recommendation is to take an oil concentrate. So for example, our Q10 serum, which is an oil-based serum, or even the Skin Power, which is an oil-based serum. Both of these oils have phytoestrogens to help balance hormone, hormonal imbalances, but are oil-based. All of the products listed here, the mask, the moisturizer, and the oils are oil-based. Remember, in the beginning, we talked about mixing oil with oil and water with water. These are just some, again, suggestions that will help you kind of think about, oh, how can I boost or enhance my mask or my moisturizer experience? The oil will also enhance the moisturizing experience by boosting the effects of the moisturizer especially for an extremely oil-deficient skin. That's a very truly dry, parched skin. Apricot mask mixed with Q10 serum or skin power. The apricot mask is a fruit that's very high naturally in fruit oils, but also antioxidant-boosting effects. Beta carotene has the ability to fight free radical damage, combat sun damage, and then you have phytoestrogen benefits in your Q10 serum and skin power, tightening, elasticizing, hydrating, and also replacing oil. You can enhance your mask by blending in a couple of drops of these oils. Grape stem cell solution. Uh, gel mask may be mixed with phytoestrogen gel mask, which is a spicy treatment. So remember that if you're using something with paprika, only use it once during the facial. And or maybe even quince apple gel mask this is a phytoestrogen serum. If you are not familiar with some of these products that we are mentioning or listing today, you can also refer to our introduction to Ulika uh, webinar, which is posted on YouTube, that gives you an introduction to Elika Organic Skincare, going over features and benefits and herbal ingredients with all of our products. So if you have more questions about what these products are doing, who they address, um, and you want more um, uh, details, refer to that webinar for um, an extensive product knowledge uh, education. Okay, so again, this would be a mask application where we're taking a, um, an anti-aging mask with stem cell technology, helping to repair slow signs of aging, boosting antioxidant benefits, with other tightening and elasticizing masks like phytoestrogen. A hydrating mask like Quince Apple can also enhance the hydrating um, benefits and correct dryness, or maybe even boost and enhance it with a gel serum. Now, these are all water-based products. These are gels. They are not oils. 
So remember that we're taking water with water here. And this could be for somewhat dehydrated, maybe not extremely dry. Calendula oil or Q10 serum mixed with linden and marigold rejuvenating treatment. This would be for an extremely dry skin type, um, also concerned with signs of aging, and could also be a sensitive skin that wants to address their um, dehydration and dryness, but also aging concerns and antioxidant boosting effects. All right, let's talk about um, calming and soothing products for sensitive skin. You could take your rosehip gel mask with fibrous stone crop gel mask boosted with rosehip serum. These are water-based products. Anything that says that it's a gel mask will be water soluble. There will be a low level of oil added to these products, which are also even safer electrical stimulation. You can boost or enhance the mix with rosehip serum if you like. Um, the serum applications are not always something you have to do. You could save it for the end of the facial, but it does allow you to add, you know, add on a booster into your um, price of your treatment, so you can actually help boost your revenue for the, for the facial as well. Um, this would be great for someone who has problem skin associated with sensitivities that may be even like papular rosacea, um, somebody who wants to address rosacea conditions, um, but also um, needs to control oils in the skin. The fiber stone crop gel mask can assist with um, darkening or uneven pigment and has brightening and tightening and lightening effects. The rose hip gel mask mixed with the rose hip gel mask and our fiber stone crop gel mask, depending on hydration level. The rose petal gel mask has a little bit more hydrating benefits. They boost um, water levels in the skin and so does the fiber stone crop gel mask as well. So you might want to use this maybe on someone who's more of a little bit dehydrated, but could have sensitive conditions or even uneven pigment as well. Could be another option. Calendula oil and our Q10 serum mixed with linden and marigold rejuvenating treatment and or rich carrot um, mask or moisturizer. Those, again, would be for somebody who's very oil deficient but has sensitivities involved with the dryness and the dehydration and maybe inflamed skin as well. Now, you might have an oilier skin type here oily, acne, inflamed skin. You have ichthymol and herb mask, maybe mixed with nettle and algae treatment, which is spicy. Could be great for drawing out um, impurities, especially for someone who is cystic, who has inflammation, may have um, a lot of impacted oil, or hard to clean out blackheads. This would be great also for reducing the signs and symptoms of the cystic acne. Sulfuric exfoliator mixed with mineral exfoliating wash. This would be a disincrustation where you could run steam over it during the disincrustation step and using a rotating brush to enhance those effects. This is a very alkaline treatment and must be followed with a balancing pH toner following this treatment. And then also this will assist with your uh, extraction process, softening impactions and emulsifying oil. You could also take rosehip gel mask, maybe mixed with apple and lemon gel mask, boosted with herb infusion, which has a lot of hormone balancing effects, cuts bacteria, slows oil production. These are great masks that provide toning and tightening effects, antibacterial effects, and also brightening with your lemon, um, an apple clarifying, and then the rosehip gel is very soothing. Rosehip exfoliator may be mixed with Hungarian paprika gel, and if you really want to enhance the emulsification, you may run steam on top for non-sensitive skin. Remember, Always kind of test these things out when you're doing stimulation and adding steam or heat on top of it before you actually work on a client. Practice first. Practice makes perfect. With any of these custom blending techniques, I would just go ahead and practice it first on a model first or with somebody that you work with in the spa before actually going in and trying these treatments on somebody. Okay, so let's do skin lightening for hyperpigmentation. Fiber stone crop gel mask, maybe mixed with apple and lemon gel mask, maybe boosted with brightening serum or stone crop toner. These are great solutions as uh, natural herbal solutions that help with bleaching and lightening the skin in a non-invasive, safe way. Uh, all of these ingredients provide those lightening effects. Also help with dehydration, maybe great for combination or even acne prone skin and boost it with a serum or even you can add a little splash of stone crop toner. Cucumber and parsley uh, mask mixed with our cucumber and parsley oxygen lightening talc. This is a professional treatment only. It is not a retailable product, but it's a wonderful series of treatments you can provide for somebody that's looking to correct or address their hyperpigmentation. So uh, deeper the damage, the more treatments you can provide. If it's not as serious of a um, condition, then you can do maybe a shorter series of three to six treatments, but you can do up to 10 to 12 of these treatments 
and do them periodically, alternating with the AHA paprika Hungarian treatment for uh, providing also a glycolic peel solution. Um, if you alternate those treatments, you'll get wonderful brightening and lightening effects. But this is how we would blend them together, taking our gel mixed with talc, and then you can enhance it with stone crop toner or brightening serum into your mix. This is the mask step of that brightening, lightening facial, which is also an oxygen facial as well. The moisturizer um, step, you can mix stone crop with moisturizer, maybe mix with apple and lemon with moisturizer as a brightening, hydrating step as well. Now, antioxidant boosting properties. Um, you know, somebody with devitalized skin, somebody who is stressed skin, or also a premature or mature skin type. You could use our sour cherry gel mask, which is now boosted with blackthorn berries, two berries that are high in anthocyanins, but also create an oxygenating effect by revitalizing, and also they can um, also provide anti-inflammatory effects too. You may move may mix that with grape stem cell solutions gel mask, which is really strong in antioxidant properties, especially within the grape seeds, and or maybe even quince apple gel mask. That also is a great solution for hydration if they're dehydrated, but it can also be a great solution for reducing inflammation and edema. Nettle and algae treatment may be blended with our sour cherry gel mask and grape stem cell solutions gel mask. This is a spicy treatment, the nettle and algae, but is a hydrating boost. So maybe they're devitalized and stressed, but severely dehydrated will give them a boost of hydration. This is a mask step. If you do this spicy treatment in the mask step, I recommend that you do a second mask to soothe and cool and calm the skin. So it more be, uh, instead of a 60-minute treatment, if you add a mask, it's going to be up to 75 minutes. AHA peel layered with our Hungarian paprika treatment. Now, this is a signature treatment. A lot of our customers do this facial. And it is a wonderful clarifying treatment for aging, um, also for reducing the appearance of acne conditions and also rosacea conditions. It's an oxygenating facial. It helps to cut bacteria, clarifies the pores, and brightens the skin, and reduces the signs of aging, like lines and wrinkles. And it has a toning and tightening and also a hormone balancing effect. So it's a great facial for anybody. The Botanical AHA Peel may be mixed with our nettle and algae treatment or our Hungarian paprika gel treatment. The botanical AHA is a 20% lactic acid peel using the botanical hollyhock, which contains lots of natural tannins and also anti-inflammatory effects and antioxidant boosting effects of phenols. It is a beautiful uh, ar ar aromatic treatment, but when you blend it with nettle and algae or paprika, you're adding in um, a detoxifying effect and also an oxygenating effect, but be, must be done on non-sensitive skin. Spinach and horsetail exfoliator may be blended with nettle and algae treatment. Another way to enhance your exfoliating treatment, emulsify oil, hydrate the skin, and also detox the skin. Maybe rosehip exfoliator mixed with nettle and algae treatment as well. All of these have antioxidant boosting effects, especially the nettle and algae. It has hydrating benefits with the nettle plant and the alginate, the freshwater algae, contains tons of antioxidant boosting benefits. And also green cherry pepper for oxygenating the skin and providing hormone balancing effects as well. All right, so we're going to do a demonstration of the Alika Organic Custom Facial. I'll be giving you some different suggestions, maybe uh, some that we already went through today, but a couple of different things, too, that you can do for, with dilution. So it's going to be really fun to watch, so I encourage you to um, spend the time to watch the facial. It'll just take a moment just to get that set up. So I'm just going to put you on hold for just a moment. Enjoy the facial demonstration and please enjoy the products. We have so many solutions for every skin type and condition and we'll be able to demonstrate how you can really custom tailor your facial and address specific needs with your clients because not everybody has the same type of skin and also the client's skin is constantly changing throughout their life as they age and also with lifestyle habit changes and even with environmental changes. You'll need to switch it up once in a while. You wanna create um, new treatments to keep them interested so you don't get bored as well and your clients don't get bored. So we'll be able to give you some fun solutions here. So just a moment while I set up my webcam and get the model ready for the facial. It'll just take me a moment.
All right, so we're going to start an Adika Custom Facial. And um, I've pre-selected my products. But remember, before you start your facial, go through a thorough consultation and a skin analysis and even a sensory testing with your client to figure out what will be the best solutions for your client today. Determine what the hydration level is of your client, whether they're oily, dehydrated, or dryness, or combination. Um, and also determine if there are any specific um, conditions that you'd like to treat. Maybe acne conditions, maybe there's rosacea, sensitivities, hormonal imbalances, hyperpigmentation, uh, et cetera. Any of those um, uh, or seborrhea conditions. Um, there may be a combination of different conditions that you'd like to treat, uh, but determine those ahead of time so that way you're able to um, pick the right products and solutions for your client. Um, do that with your magnifying lamp and start cleansing the skin first, remove the makeup, and then you can also do another skin analysis following the removal of the makeup just to determine if there's anything else that you didn't see before. So what I'm going to do is remove her makeup. Uh, just to go through what we have uh, to do this facial, some supplies that you may need is a bowl of water, or what I've done is I've pre-brewed an herbal tea with green tea and also jasmine tea. Um, the benefits of green tea and jasmine together are absolutely amazing. The green tea provides you with antioxidant properties. Jasmine provides you with toning and tightening effects. Jasmine is also great for prevention of stretch marks and also helping to repair scarring. It inhibits scar tissue formation. It also is uh, aromatically a very soothing effect. It also has a wonderful calming effect. It has antiseptic and antiviral and antibacterial effects. There are many herbs that have antibacterial effects. So you can really enhance antibacterial benefits by adding uh, herbal tea into your dilution or even using them as compresses and dipping your compresses into the tea. Um, also for great for eye treatments as well. What I'm going to do is just dip my, and you can chill it, of course, brew it when it's, you know, you have to brew it and boil the water to brew it, but in, you can also bring the temperature down to the water by chilling it if you're going to use it for compresses or eye treatments, or if you'd like to keep it warm, you can. But um, I prefer to uh, chill it so that way it's appropriate for using around the eyes and it's great for as compresses at the end of the facial. What I've done is I've had a round cotton pad that I've cut in half and I've dipped it into my herbal tea. I'm going to have her open up her eyes, look up, and just place these round cotton pads gently underneath the eye for the eye makeup removal step. Okay, go ahead and close your eyes. Then I'll take a round cotton pad and dip that in water. Some other supplies that I've made sure that I've had is a couple other bowls for custom blending other masks and treatments together. I also have um, cotton tipped applicators for applying creams and eye creams. Also, some um, applicator sticks for um, keeping sure that you don't um, cross-contaminate your products. And also a mask brush. And I also have 4x4 four four cotton squares for uh, applying toner and also using for facial compresses, round cotton pads. And also, I do have a pre-cut um, compress that I'll use over the top of her facial mask. Now, I've gotten the round cotton pad moistened. And what I'm going to use first is my um, um, a sour cherry cleansing milk. And the cleansing milk is going to be my eye makeup remover and my lipstick remover. I'm going to simply just pump the cleanser onto the cotton pad and sweep this across the eye area in inward circular motion and also sweeping it down the lashes and across the lashes to remove mascara. You may need to hold that uh, half round pad that's under the eye down so it doesn't move. But what this allows you to do is to be able to have that catch the mascara so you don't end up with dark circles under the eyes. Once complete, just simply remove the eye pad from underneath the eye. And you can use the other side of the pad if you need more uh, cleanser. Use the other side, which is clean. Remove, and it just will remove the makeup very thoroughly, and it will not irritate the eye skin, oxygen deficient skin, or stress skin, or even combination large open pored skin. Okay, we're going to use one more cotton pad with some cleanser on it to remove lipstick as well. And you can just sweep the uh, round cotton pad right over the upper and lower lip.
and then we'll begin the facial cleansing step with the cleansing milk. Remember, these have a pH of a four and a half to a five and a half. If you wish, you can take um, other uh, cleansing milks, like say, for example, if I wanted to address hyperpigmentation, I could mix lemon cleansing milk and sour cherry cleansing milk together in my hand as well. That's another option. Now, before I do any dilution, I'm just going to simply apply this directly to the skin. No dilution this time. Begin cleansing the neck. the chin, and then the cheek, the upper and lower lip. Cleanse the chin. Up the side of the nose. If you start to feel the product starts to absorb into the skin, if they're dehydrated, it may do that. I'm going to dip my hands now in the herbal tea to re-emulsify the product so it's easier to glide onto the skin. You can cleanse for about a minute. Make sure to clean the sides of the nose and down the nose. I have some steam starting, which is great for emulsifying the oil, getting the dead skin cells softened, because your products will actually work more effectively if you begin with a little bit of steam during the cleansing, and that is certainly okay to do. You can dip your hands periodically to keep the product emulsified. and then take a damp face towel or sponges uh, to remove the cleanser. After your first cleansing step, you'll do a second cleansing step with one of the exfoliating washes. Now, this step, I'm going to actually show you how to do a custom blend with our mineral exfoliating wash and the sulfuric exfoliator. This will be a disincrustation step, and I'll also show you how to brush with that product. It'll help to loosen up the pores, open the pores, and emulsify the oil in the skin. It'll also be a great way, uh, a great tool uh, to use for your extractions. So I'm going to take the sulfuric exfoliator, use about a teaspoon amount of the exfoliator. This is our sulfuric exfoliator. It is a smooth gommage, typically used as a mechanical exfoliator, as um, something that you can use to roll off the skin um, as a physical type of exfoliation. Put that in your bowl, and then take your exfoliating cleanser, the mineral exfoliating wash, which comes in a 4.2 ounce bottle. Simply going to pump about three pumps of that into my bowl and whip it together. I'm going to keep the steam on the skin because the steam is going to help with the disincrustation. It'll become light and fluffy because it does have the gel mixed in. I'm even going to just take a little bit of tea, just a little bit of moisture in it, so I can make it a little bit more fluffy. Just a drop. So 
it'll just help you blend it together a little bit better too. But it becomes kind of more creamy and lighter and fluffy because you've added the mineral exfoliating wash, which has a very alkaline, alkaline pH, which we saw before in the beginning uh, when I went through the pH of the categories. The sulfuric exfoliator has a pH of around seven, uh, or I'm sorry, around eight. So that is going to be a little bit more alkaline as well, seven to eight or so. I'm just going to take my uh, mask brush and paint this onto the skin. So it's become a little bit more lighter, it's creamier, it's fluffier. The steam is going to help to prevent this from drying out. As we know, if you've used sulfuric exfoliator before, it can dry quickly, but the steam will keep it moist. All right, so next I'm going to brush the skin with an ultrasonic brush. And you can do a mechanical one that's hooked up to your all-in-one facial machine if you have, or if it's a standalone, but it um, uh, does have a cord, you can use that as well. It may have be the kind of um, um, older kind where they um, have just one speed, but your ultrasonic will actually rotate in uh, multi-directions for thorough cleansing. Get that in The brush helps to kind of loosen up the pores, loosen up the clogged pores, soften the impactions in the pores. Sulfur has a mineralizing and a softening effect as well as the uh, mineral exfoliating wash. The mineral exfoliating wash has antibacterial effects and anti-inflammatory effects as well. And as another tip, you can use the mineral exfoliating wash as a body wash as well, especially for problematic areas of the back, shoulders, neck, chest. Next, I'm going to show you an exfoliation with the rose tip exfoliator and the Hungarian paprika gel mixed together. I turned off the steam because the Hungarian paprika gel creates its own heat. It's not always necessary to do this, but again, I mentioned you could do it if decided to on somebody who's non-sensitive. Because I did the brushing and a disincrustation, I'm going to choose not to use the steam and just use these two together. The rose tip exfoliator, which has cornmeal, a little bit of lactic acid in it, some lemon, and of course, the benefits of the rose tip, which are full of vitamin content and antioxidant properties. The Hungarian paprika gel treatment is a wonderful product for somebody, um, actually any skin type. It has any inflammatory effects, hormone balancing, detoxifying, and an oxygenating effect. It also helps to emulsify oil. So what we're going to do is take about a teaspoon amount of my rose tip gel mask. And you can simply do this in your hand, or you can also do it and do it in a bowl. I will do it in a bowl because it does help to keep it neater and cleaner. <laughs> and I'm going to do about, let's do about equal amounts. Now you can cut the stimulation by cutting the um, amount of paprika that you use in half.
And I'm just simply mixing those two together in a bowl. This will elevate circulation and increase blood flow, aiding in detoxification by stimulating lymph. It also does, again, have a warming effect, so it helps to open the pores and soften congestion in the pores. And I'm just going to simply use my hands to apply. We're going to leave this to sit for about 10 to 15 minutes. We want to give the paprika time to work its, work its magic. It has to come up to a, a peak temperature and then it calms down. It's a little bit of a longer exfoliation. So also just take that into consideration too when using paprika that you will also need to let it work. You know, it's not going to be just a two to five minute exfoliation. It's going to take a little bit longer for that product to take effect. I'm just going to simply cover the eyes with eye pads using my 4x4 cotton square. I'm going to dip that into some of the tea here, my green tea and my jasmine tea concoction, <laughs> and uh, just simply butterfly and place right over the top of the eye area. You'll notice the skin will start to increase in um, color. You get a little bit of blood that comes up to the surface. It gets a little bit of a rosy glow. Now to keep the skin, or to keep the client's mind off the skin stimulation, you want to provide some massage. And providing that massage will give you um, some aromatherapy benefits too if you use any of our um, body oils too. It's a wonderful way to introduce a body product, but also to create soothing and relaxation, especially with the soothing herb body oil. It can a lot of soothing, aromatic effects, anti-inflammatory effects for the skin as well. I'm just going to do some shoulder and neck massage while this is on the skin. Check with your client as far as how comfortable they feel with the paprika or stimulation on the skin. How is this feeling to you? Does it feel comfortable? So you can see, uh, in the, hopefully you guys can see this, there's a lot of blood that's coming up to the surface of the skin. If you, I turn her to the side, you can see a little line of demarcation where we ended with the product. You'll see that um, her face versus her decollete area is definitely increasing in color. And this is great to be able to see that because, and also again, make sure you practice you know, this kind of a treatment first on somebody in your spa or maybe somebody at home before you do work on a client if you've never used the paprika before. Just, and also make sure you receive a treatment because you experiencing this, you'll be able to best describe the um, sensation and the effects of the product uh, with your client. And then you'll be able to establish that trust because you'll have confidence in the way that you describe it because you, you've experienced it and also practiced it first. We'll also have a wonderful, beautiful, rosy glow by the end of the facial. This um, kind of in more intense redness that's happening on the client doesn't, doesn't look like this at the end of the facial. It will eventually fade to a more normal tone and become more of a glowing, hydrated skin. And it'll also be very tight and lifted and firm because of the phytoestrogen benefits as well. And with a little bit of a scalp massage, and then we'll remove the product. Remember, okay, so after 15 minutes, 
remove the eye pads, and then remove with a warm, damp face towel. Now, you might find that the product feels kind of tight. It might be feel a little dry. What you can do is you can take a little bit of sour cherry cleansing milk or the other, whatever cleansing milk that you were using, dip your hands in some of the water or the tea that you have, and simply loosen up the product with the uh, moisture on your hand so that becomes easier to remove. Okay, looks much better. All right, take out a towel, remove the product. And because the paprika has stimulated and warmed the skin, make sure that your towel is a little bit more like room temperature or cool. You can also pre-chill or pre-cool towels ahead of time as well. Otherwise, room temperature is appropriate too. Wet towels tend to cool off quick, fairly quickly, so it shouldn't take too long to get it down to room temperature. Now the product is uh, rolling off the skin. You might be able to see this a little bit. Um, and it has sort of almost like a gommage effect. And our scrubs are used both as a scrub, you can massage it in with your fingers, or when you're using the towel, after it has that drying effect, it will roll and gommage off the skin. So you get almost a like really nice extra kind of exfoliating technique along with this product. It's very multifunctional. Or you can use sponges. You know, that will also help with rolling it off the skin. Now I'm going to tone the skin next to balance the skin's pH. And I'm going to use the sour cherry toner boosted with blackthorn berries, a slightly acidic toner. And I'm going to take four by four cotton pads and spray them and saturate them with the toner. This will also help to remove any residue of the product that may have been missed, charges the skin with vitamins and nutrients, antioxidants and minerals, and then also um, provides aromatherapeutic benefits as well. But the main function, of course, is to balance the skin's pH. You can do this after cleansing, after exfoliating, and after masks, too. Next is your massage step. Now, if you're going to do extractions, turn your steamer back on and use your Seponaria Linaria massage cream. The Seponaria Linaria massage cream is a disencrusting massage cream using herbs step, uh, that are called Seponaria Linaria or also Soapwort or Snapdragon or other common names for those herbs. It has also yarrow, which is an herb that has a medicinal and anti-inflammatory and healing benefit. Uh, the product is specifically used to help emulsify oil dislodge clog pores and open and relax the pores for easier extraction and, um, and clog pore removal. Another option, if the client is a little drier uh, or has more aging concerns, maybe even some slight sensitivities, you could use the carotene massage cream. The carotene massage cream provides anti-aging benefits, aromatherapeutic benefits of calendula and lavender, provides a soothing and healing and calming effect, and phytoestrogens like flaxseed oil tighten firm and lift the skin and are anti-wrinkle. There's another massage cream, our paprika stimulating massage cream. Because it's paprika, you would again decide if this would be appropriate to use on the client. This has to be, have to be non-sensitive, but it's great for devitalized skin. Those oil-based massage creams are perfect for somebody 
who is dry, dehydrated, like the carotene and the paprika. And you can even blend more oil into that massage cream as a custom blending technique, choosing one of, of the four treatment serums, like calendula oil, yarrow oil, or possibly even Q10 serum. Here are in our paint 0.8 ounce bottles, our oil serums that you can enhance your massage experience with any of the massage creams and also the moisturizers for a drier skin. Now, if you're gonna be doing more extraction work, use Stephanaria and Lenaria on its own with steam. You can also add steam onto the other massage creams as well. So what I'm gonna do is the carotene massage cream and blend a little yarrow oil. So this is another custom blending technique. Take a little bit of the massage cream, about a teaspoon, and then I'm gonna do about a drop or two of the oil right into the palm of my hand and mix those together. The yarrow oil has anti-inflammatory and soothing benefits and healing benefits. So even though it's in the seponaria, we still got it adding the oil into the carotene massage cream. with a warm, damp face towel, and proceed with extractions if necessary. The massage technique, again, helps emulsify oil, opens the pores, and prepares the skin properly for extraction. Now, if you were working someone that's drier or dehydrated, and there is no cleaning to be done, you just move on to your mask. All right, we're ready to move into the custom blend of the cocktailing, and I will show you how to cocktail and blend your masks together. We chose to use um, some gel masks, and we are starting with the sour cherry gel mask that's boosted with blackthorn berries for antioxidant boosting effects, helping to uh, reduce the amount of um, uh, oil in the skin. It's great for combination skin, but it's also hydrating dry areas as well. It has a, uh, the ability to reduce inflammation also. Also, what we're going to blend into it is the um, Grape Stem Cell Solutions Gel Mask. It also is going to boost um, anti-aging properties, slow the signs of aging, hydrate the skin, and prevent antioxidant boosting effects. It'll also uh, be a wonderful treatment to elasticize and tighten the skin, really good for anti-wrinkle care. Then Quince Apple Gel Mask. This is a great mask for hydration. Wonderful antioxidants that have endocyanins that assist with reducing inflammation and edema and puffiness. It can make a wonderful under eye mask as well. Same with the sour cherry. It can be great for dark circles under the eyes. It's another great way of custom blending and spot treating with our products. Uh, what we're going to be doing is just blending all three together. And I'm going to put this in a bowl. You can also just do it straight in your hand as well. I'm going to use about a quarter of a teaspoon for each product to kind of um, give you enough product to use on the face. And usually it's about a teaspoon of our masks. So you don't need to use a full teaspoon if you're cocktailing. You just need to use a little bit, about a quarter each is good, I think, or a third. 
third of a teaspoon, sorry. Simply just mix them together in the bowl by folding them into each other, as I'm doing here. You can also add a booster. I'm going to add the Age Defense Bioflavonoid Serum. The Age Defense has elderberry and black currants that are full of bioflavonoid content, providing with antioxidant effects, helping to scavenge free radicals, great for devitalized stress or oxygen deficient skin, and adding about two pumps right into the bowl. Remember, I mentioned you can do this in your hand if you find that easier too. I am just going to apply it with my hand, but you can also apply it with a brush if you want. It's kind of what your, whatever your preference is. And what a wonderful smelling mask. I think my stomach's going to growl here in a second. <laughs> smells so good. And these masks are to a tad bit slightly more acidic. These are not any alkaline masks. So it's great for hydration, especially dehydrated clients. Right, all over the face and the neck. I'm even going to go under the eye area. This is a great mask that can reach up and around the eye orbital bone to really address uh, concerns around the eyes, darkness, lack of tone, good for anti-wrinkle. I'm going to take my compress and soak that into the tea, the green tea, or the green and jasmine tea. So we're adding a little bit of an herbal benefit on top of the mask and creating a really nice soothing uh, anti-inflammatory mask too. Right, right over the top of the mask. And doing this also will keep your mask moist. So the nutrients are active longer on the skin and also aid with penetration and absorption of the mask helping to reach the cells much faster. Use a dry towel to trap the heat in so the body heat doesn't escape. And you're also able to provide an even deeper penetration and absorption of the product. You can also preheat this towel, but it is dry. Do not do it while it's wet because it'll cool off too quickly. And at room temperature, it still works very well to trap that body heat in. Uh, wrap the face like you're doing when you remove the product, but instead of removing it, just simply tuck it in at the top so it stays in place. So if her head falls to the side, it doesn't fall off. Wonderful. So you can perform a hand and arm massage during the affecting period. The affecting period of our masks are best left on 15, a uh, full 15 to 20 minutes. Some facials you may not have that much time, so at least 10 minutes. If you can give it up to 15 minutes, that's the best. But if you cannot, it's okay. You just got at least 10 minutes. I'm using the carotene massage cream to massage the hands and arms, adding a little dollop of the Soothing Herbs body oil, just like I did for the face. You can use any of our rich moisturizers, like Rich Carrot, or Linden and Marigold Rejuvenating Treatment is another great one. And you can utilize those for massage as well. Any of our body lotions work really well for massage that you can blend oil into. Remove the towel, so this is about after the 15-minute affecting period, and then remove the uh, gauze mask or the compress that's moistened, and remove it down towards the chin. You'll notice that most of the product has absorbed into the skin. Take your warm towel out of the cabbie, and apply this. Cool it off a little bit before you apply it, and leave it a little warm to remove the product. Make it easier.
And you notice a lot of that intense redness from the paprika has already gone down. So she's just left with a very healthy, rosy glow. And make sure you describe it as such and try not to use too many terms that are negative, you know, as hot or burning, especially when you go to apply the product. Make sure you go through the list of benefits and how great their skin's going to look afterwards and even days to follow. The products uh, in our um, gel mask category sometimes have seeds and skins and pulp that are kind of chunky. So make sure that you take time to double check to make sure you've removed everything, especially around the nose and around the hairline and around the eye area. Sometimes it can dry kind of clear. So you just want to make sure that you've removed everything. And also the earlobe. Sometimes the skins and seeds fall from the product into the ear. Now, if you are using more of an alkaline mask for an acne treatment, I would recommend toning after the mask. These are acidic masks that we just used, so it's not necessary to follow with a toner as they have more of a natural skin pH balance. So next, we're going to apply a treatment serum. Uh, I've decided to use the brightening serum to address some issues uh, that are um, of some hyperpigmentation around the forehead and the nose and around the cheek area. This is a great solution. This one pump is all that's needed to a direct brightening, especially for home care. This is a, a must product. It is highly concentrated, the very high concentration of the herbs that help to brighten and lighten the skin. And if you're wanting to address discoloration and hyper, or hyperpigmentation and brighten the skin, it's a must that it's used twice a day, every day, under the moisturizer. Apply that first, even up to around the eye orbital bone, press it in, and then apply your eye treatments. I'm going to use the Age Defense Bioflavonoid Eye Cream. This is a great one for brightening the eye area. St. John's is a really great one for tightening, lifting, and firming, and defining the eye contour area. This one's great for premature or mature skin, but really good for stressed or divitalized skin as well. And they can be used in dry areas of the face or the body. So if you want to use it as a neck cream, or maybe you want to use it as a, um, a decollete cream, those are great places to use it. Tapping gently from the outside to the inner corner of the eye, in between the eye, and even under the brow bone. I'm going to blend a moisturizer together next using my Stone Crop Whip Moisturizer and my Apple Lemon Whip Moisturizer to address uh, brightening and lightening. And also, the stone crop whip tends to be a little bit more hydrating. But the benefits of stone crop and lemon together are wonderful for addressing hyperpigmentation. So just about a half a tea of each, as you only need a pea-sized amount of your moisturizer. So it doesn't take too much cream. And simply just blend those together in your hand. Our whipped moisturizers are very fine, light creams that maintain more of an acidic environment. To promote a healthy skin and a healthy balance. This is wonderful. And then follow with one of the client's favorite lip balms. And at the beginning, you can decide what lip balm she would prefer. And I'm just going to finish with the lemon citrus lip balm. This is probably one of our most popular lip balms. It's a shea butter base with beeswax lip balm with great seed oil, very emollient and moisturizing, antioxidant boosting effects with beta carotene as well. But a great way to complete the facial and hydrate the lips before they leave. Now remember to go through your home care recommendations with your client following the facial. She looks wonderful. She's clarified, she's energized, and the pores are nice and tightened. And you'll talk a little bit about, too, some of the conditions that we specifically address. We specifically address some of the hyperpigmentation with the finishing products. So that would be something to recommend for home care. 
recommend also how often they should come in for the facial, depending on what you're addressing as far as condition. Now, if you're correcting and trying to address a more severe problem like acne and hyperpigmentation, have them come in more regularly. If they're sensitive, it'd be more maybe more like a monthly maintenance facial. Uh, after a series of treatments, after you know working on correction, then have them come in monthly for maintenance and always make sure you talk about home care. And switch it up according to the needs of the client, their lifestyle changes, their aging um, uh, maturity level, and also the environmental um, changes that may happen as well. So these are some things to discuss with the client. To also keep them um, coming back to you and loyal because you're actually helping them, which is really what we are. We're therapists that help uh, improve the state of the skin. So thank you so much for joining me today, and be on the lookout for more of our webinars. And you'll be able to find a recording of this up on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, Enrique Organic Skin Care from Sapilet, that you'll find uh, all of our series of webinars, and this one will be uploaded very shortly. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.